For the Rebel Media, I'm Ezra Levant. I am in Peterborough. We're not quite at the county court. We stepped in off the street because it was so windy. I've been inside the courtroom live tweeting the case of Tommy Robinson versus the Cambridgeshire Police. He's suing them for harassment about a spectacular incident that Tommy caught on his own cell phone a couple of years ago when he was out with his kids uh, to watch a football game in Cambridgeshire. And he was at a restaurant, he'd been there all day with his kids, he was watching the football game on TV, the kids were playing, and the police came in, ordered him to leave, threatened him with arrest if they didn't, and even when he left, they frog marched him to the railway station and videoed him down the way. It, it's incredible, and the only reason we know about it is because Tommy uploaded it to the internet. Well, we had various police witnesses today, including a police officer who followed them down the road to the railway station with a handy cam. Tommy made a big point about saying, where is that video footage? It will prove everything I've said, including um, my own daughter, Tommy said, who ran off into the street and almost got hit by a vehicle. Well, the officer who took the handy cam photo had a very interesting testimony. He said that he did not keep the footage. He was asked about it. He said that he didn't think it was newsworthy or noteworthy or it was anything to, to think about at all. So he deleted it, and he didn't even know when he deleted it. He suggested he may have deleted it the very next day, even though he said there are certain circumstances where such evidence has to be kept for a minimum of 28 days, or even, he said, as long as 100 years. That was interesting to me. We heard a lot more about policing and how the football police are a specialized task force to go after what they call football hooligans, basically fans who go from town to town following their favorite teams, they get drunk and they fight against other fans. But what we heard again and again is that the indicia by which they would arrest such a person, drunkenness, a known risk, they call such people risk supporters, uh, Tommy didn't meet those criteria. Tommy was not drinking, it was a family day. Tommy was not labeled a risk supporter. So there was some very interesting cross-examination by Tommy's lawyer asking the police officer, why did you arrest Tommy if he didn't meet these standards? It was very interesting. Um, there was a, a surprising development today, and it was that I myself became part of the conversation in court, not on purpose, I can assure you. But, of course, I came to Peterborough to live tweet this. That's why I'm here. I believe in justice. I believe uh, in Tom, Tommy's suit. I believe in Tommy's a friend. Viewers crowdfunded to have me here. So I was doing what I always do, tweet with my opinions. I did it at the Old Bailey when Tommy was uh, had his hearings there. I did it at the Royal Courts of Justice in front of no one less than the Supreme, sorry, the, uh, the Lord Chief Justice of uh, uh, Great Britain and, and uh, of England and Wales himself. So, um, I mean, I've live tweeted many times from the UK, and I thought I was doing the same thing here. But the judge um, specifically asked me not to tweet commentary, just to tweet exactly what was said. Um, I would use the word stenography. She didn't use that word, but that's what I think journalism is without commentary. It's just, okay, he said this, she said that. And I'm doing a fair bit of that. But the judge was quite adamant about it. And I've apologize and said, well, I'm sorry, I don't want to get off side with you, Your Honor. It's your judge. It's your, you're the judge. This is your court. I don't want to do anything off side. Um, and I thought I, I uh, corrected my florid language. But then after the trial, um, the judge invited me back into the court. I mean, actually, one of the lawyers did. And the lawyers and the judge and the clerks were there. And the judge had another conversation with me. And she made it clear, no opinion commentary at all about the goings on in the case. Not only not in the court, but not outside the court, like not even here in this room. Not even after the trial is over, but before the judgment. So the judge said no more commentary on the case, no more characterizations of the testimony until she herself gives her ruling. Now that may come quite quickly, that may come at the end of the week, but and listen, it's, this is not my fight to fight. I'm used to a more robust press. I'm used to journalists having the right to, to call it like they see it. I mean, in Canada, we have the very famous journalist, Christy Blatchford, who has an uproarious coverage of court cases, and they're very well read. Um, I understand from some of the Tommy's own contempt of court cases the worry about corrupting a jury, but there's no jury in this trial. 
Um, the judge also referred to intimidating witnesses. I had asked a question of some of the police officers when I saw them outside. They didn't answer me, but um, that was apparently an intimidating, they felt intimidated by me. So I guess that's my way of saying that the judge said, stop doing what you're doing. Stop providing opinion commentary, either in the court or outside the court, until the, the ruling is entered. And so I want to let you know this. So if you've seen my reporting over the next day and a half or two days, you'll understand why the flavor is out of it. It's vanilla, not Tabasco. I'll still continue to live tweet, but I won't give my thoughts on things, which I should tell you is very unlike me. But uh, it was made clear to me that if I persist in giving my commentaries, the judge would probably hold me in contempt. I mean, she didn't say as much, but that was my understanding of it. I should tell you that I have therefore decided to temporarily delete five tweets that I made. And I talked to the judge about the ones I would delete. Um, now I have saved an image of them and I may choose to put them up after the trial is done. I thought one of them was a funny joke. Um, I understand her criticisms of the others, and it's not for me to agree or disagree. It's not my court, it's her court. It's not my country, it's her country. I, um, I think I've learned a little bit more about the UK. I've learned a little bit more about contempt of court law in the UK, and I think there's a problem here in the UK. I think that it is not quite as free as it should be, and I think that citizens don't quite have the access to open justice that they should. But I say this as a foreigner, a tourist here. I have no real business in the UK. I mean, we have a lot of UK supporters, but it's not for me to lead the charge for free speech in terms of what you can live tweet from a British court. I just don't think that's my fight. I think that's the fight for Brits to do. And I don't want to be the guinea pig test case. I don't want to be held in contempt, and I don't want to be thrown in jail. I, I mean, obviously that wouldn't happen in this case, but it happened to Tommy. And so that's my report on the day. Um, I don't think I gave you a particularly strong opinion on what I said in court, at least I certainly tried not to. Uh, I'm not even really giving you my opinion about what the judge said. The judge said what she said. And I said, let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to take down. I suggested five particular tweets, and I have since taken them down. Uh, there are two videos that I previously recorded that I have now taken off of YouTube until the trial is over. And I think I'll put them back when the verdict is up because I think they were useful commentary. I just find it, frankly, a little sad to learn from this judge who surely knows where the line of free speech and where the line of deference is. There is no jury here that could be have their minds altered. I, in my heart, don't believe I was intimidating to three burly policemen because I asked them a question. But it's not for me to decide. It's not my opinion. It's a judge whose courtroom I was in. Uh, I am not a citizen. I am a, an interloper. And surely I should defer to the local custom. If I was in Iran, I would defer to the local custom. If I was... At the Vatican, I would defer to the local custom. Those are strong cultures and customs. Here I am in the UK. I seem to have been mistaken about free speech in the UK, and so I am corrected. Um, I'll have a lot more to say about matters once the judgment is verdict, uh, the, the judgment is, is rendered. But until then, I should say that although my own interactions with the court really had nothing to do with Tommy's case, they were probably the greatest eye-opener of my trip here. And um, I have to say, that I, my biggest feeling is one of sadness. Uh, I was sitting next to a, another journalist um, for a local newspaper, pretty good guy, obviously doesn't share my politics. And um, I just kept sitting with him, and I don't want to characterize what he says, but he says, yeah, here in the UK, we just pretty much write it. Well, listen, I know that there's some spectacular cases that uh, some of the tabloids have strong opinions on, but I just wish that the journalist who was sitting next to me was a little bit more revved up about the fact that you can't offer an opinion on a court case that's ongoing. Um, I suppose his reaction, or lack thereof, was what really made me sad. And I'm quite certain, I haven't checked Twitter yet or other feedback, but I am quite certain 
that the uniform response from the mainstream media will be one of jubilation that I have had my wings clipped or my tongue tied. Um, and I suppose I, I have, although when the verdict is out, when the judgment is out, I'll, I'll surely speak freely then. But the fact that Brits would cheer the lack of free speech for Brits, the fact that journalists couldn't care, in fact, there were journalists waiting for me after the court, they had been tipped off that uh, I was speaking too freely. That's the saddest part of my trip, is that Fleet Street, which to me was synonymous with the bold newspapers, that the United Kingdom, the home of the Magna Carta, of John Milton's Areopagitica, of the, the free speech movement, really isn't anymore. And I'm not even mad at the judge. How could I be? It's her court, more to the point. But I think she's probably accurately expressing the law. There needs to be law reform in the UK. I just don't know if anyone's up for it. Let me close by saying to my friends in Canada and the United States, realize the unique freedoms you have, especially Americans with your First Amendment, and hold on to them. In the UK, I don't think they have. For the Rebel Media, I'm Ezra Lopez. I'm here in Peterborough, UK, covering Tommy Robinson's case as best I can, subject to the restrictions uh, that the judge has made clear to me for my live tweeting. I'll do my best to follow those rules because I seek no quarrel with her. I just wish they had a bit more free speech in the United Kingdom. For all of my reports, go to tommytrial.com.